What is up everybody, Dr. Bacon of the Dragon Peas here, and we are here with some Game Dev Tycoon, which for some of you, you've never heard before, and for others, you probably haven't heard that name in like 10 years, because this game came out quite some time ago. But we are here, um, this is a game I've been playing recently, just out of boredom, and I thought, what the heck, why not make a little mini-series out of it? This shouldn't be super long, and it won't affect anything else through the ages and lonely adventures will still come out on their normal schedule i'm just kind of doing this for fun and you guys can follow along if you're interested so welcome to game dev tycoon in this business simulation you have been transported back in time to start your very own game development company right at the beginning of the pc revolution in the next 35 years you can build your dream company create best-selling games gain fans and become the leader of the market with of course the uh foreknowledge of certain events so it's a really, really interesting game. You know, tycoon games and business games have never been my thing, but this one's really, really fun. So we're just gonna jump right in. Before you start your adventure, we have to give our company a name. Um, we will be Bacon Industries, because of course we will be. Um, now, I'm hesitating on using Dr. Bacon as a name because it, it gets thrown around in game like a real person's name. So I'm just gonna make up some random name. Um, how about Henry? I will be Henry, just because. And... Uh, yeah, let's just stick with that. Sure, why not? And we are going to go ahead... Oh, <laughs> you can see the same things on his screen. So this game's a lot of fun. Uh, it's really funny. Uh, it's a, there's a lot of little Easter eggs here and there if you look around. Um, pay attention and it's just it's just a really good time i have played it before a bit i i bought this game back when it came out like like i said like nine years ago and i've played it on and off since i've beaten it i put that in quotes once um but i'm not very good at it nonetheless i do have tutorials turned off just because i know i want to try to explain things and when the game's also explaining things it's just it's just a nightmare so I'll do my best, and if you're confused, I apologize. And I'll probably turn the tutorials back on later when I get to the later stages of the game, because I've only gotten there like once or twice, and I do not remember what I'm doing. But we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Since you played the game before, you can choose to use previously gained hints. No, I do not want to do that. Um, and you can see I actually tried this before, and about 15 minutes in I realized I should have turned off the tutorials because that was, that was bad. So, we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. So, there's kind of a lot going on, but also not very much. My mouse is glitching out. Also, apologies if I sound kind of weird. I got my wisdom teeth out like five days ago and it still really hurts and I'm still super swollen. So if I sound kind of like, I don't know. If I sound dumber, that's why. So you can see, you know, we've got a little DeLorean here. We've got pawn in the corner. You know, just, just lots of lots of little fun stuff. So we start out, we are in the 80s, and we have $70,000, which is not a small amount of money, and we are living in our garage making games. So, when we go to develop a game, we have a few different things going on. So we have to pick a name, pick a topic, a genre, and a platform. Now, topics are very hit or miss. Uh, what I mean by that is you start with four, and what four you start with can really impact how you're able to succeed. So, oh, okay. So we've got aliens, game dev, sports, and abstract. Okay, so <laughs> one of the big issues here is when it comes down to it, you don't actually really get to design the games. You're more just allocating time and money. And the result of that is what you think is important based on the image of the game you have in your head and what the game makers of this game thought were important can be very different depending on what, like, I, I don't know what they think an alien game would look like, you know, it, anyway, so we're just going to jump right in. These are not great, but we're going to try sports because in this era, I guess that kind of makes sense. And we're going to pick a genre. Uh, simulation i think so we've action adventure rpg simulation and strategy so we'll do simulation i think it's the closest to what we want a lot of it's just kind of sacrifice of figuring out what's the closest to what you imagine and then we pick a platform 
Now, one of my favorite things about this game is the names of the companies and the systems and all that are all changed because of trademarks and stuff. Um, and some of them are absolutely hilarious. Uh, so here we've got the Gavador 64, of no relation to the Commodore, and we've got the PC. So there's a, there's a few different things that, that go into all these decisions. Early on, you're just kind of guessing and just going with the flow, but later on, these decisions are going to start to matter a lot more. So we've got development cost, and then we have market share. So market share is going to impact how much you can sell. Um, development cost is self-explanatory. Genre match is unknown. So one of the advantages we have, you know, as someone who traveled back in time, is we know a bit about the future. Um, and periodically, the game will remind you of you know industry changes that are going to happen. So what I happen to know, based on my knowledge of history and also this game, is that right now, uh, the Gavador is actually in the lead, and it's going to continue succeeding, and it's going to push PCs to the point where people think PCs are going to die out, and then they're going to go bankrupt. But, for right now, I think this, even though it's $15,000 more expensive, I think this is the right call, so we're going to do that. So, right now we have a cost of $25,000, so... Um, there's a lot to look at here, but up here we have zero fans because we don't exist. Uh, it's year one, you know, this is this is kind of the timeline, and then we have our money. We are, you know, again, $70,000 is not a small amount of cash, but in the world of game development, it, it, it's, it's something. Um, so we're gonna, we're just gonna call it Bacon Sports because I am very creative. So. With that, we can go ahead and hit next, and here we decide our graphics. Now, the other issue is too, sometimes it can be tempting to imagine a certain thing when you come up with a game idea, and then remember, oh wait, it's this era, and half of the things you imagine don't exist yet. So, 2D graphics is version one. This is like, you know, arcade game, like, you know, Oregon Trail looks impressive kind of thing. So. Making a sports game on this is going to be a bit of a stretch, but we're going to try it. So, so we start development. So there's three stages to every to, to every game development, and each stage, my mouse is really freaking out. I don't know what what, the, what this is all about. There we go. There's three stages to the development of every game, and each stage, you get to decide what you're going to prioritize. There's also up here, you can see there's four little bubbles. Those are things that you develop as you develop a game. So the big ones are design and technology. Those are game points. And those decide how good your game will be. And it also decides kind of like how the game is, is targeted. So design is like art and, you know, story and gameplay, that kind of thing. And, and they're kind of half and half. Technology is, is, is uh, the nitty gritty, you know, the mechanics, how well it actually works. So... You know, story and quests is very much design. Engine is very much technology. Gameplay, I think, is kind of half and half. I'm not totally certain on that one. But, yeah, so we want, to, we want to get those, and we'll get those based on how well we allocate our time and based on how the, uh, the matchup works and based on our experience and all this different stuff. You also have bugs and research. Both of those just kind of pop up as you, as you uh, make games. Bugs, you can get rid of at the end. Research is really good. It's what we use to get new stuff. So for a sports simulation game, story and quests, I'm gonna put very low. And also, these are relativistic sliders. I can put them all at the top and all at the bottom, and it is the exact same thing. It's all about how they are relative to each other, at least right now. So we're gonna put story and quests as very low, like almost non-existent. Gameplay is gonna be very high. Engine's gonna be, eh. I think I think this is I think for sports it's mostly going to be gameplay, um, and we hit OK, and now we get to watch as those little bubbles pop up. So already we've got some bugs, we've got quite a bit of design points, we got some research points, and we're at stage two. So now we get to decide on dialogues, level design, and AI. So dialogues are again going to be almost non-existent. Level design is going to be pretty high, but I actually think AI is going to be higher. Because for a sports simulation game, we're going to want, you know, challenging opponents. So AI is going to be pretty important. So, yeah, I think that's good. So we'll hit OK. And as we go along, we will have choices. Oh, and you can see up there. So I don't know if you caught that. But 
uh, over here you have monthly costs. So the other thing is, you know, you can kind of sit on a game to try and develop, you know, get more points, but you have to release it eventually because you are constantly losing money by existing, as is the plight of humanity. So it's, I think right now we're like 8,000 a month of just, you know, monthly costs. So here we have, you know, graphics and sound. Those are our only options right now. Later on, we'll have more choices and we can do more advanced stuff, which will make the game better, but it also costs more to develop. So, yeah. So for sports simulation, world design, I'm gonna put pretty low. That's not really important at all. Graphics, pretty important. Sounds also pretty important though. So we're gonna, we're gonna put that there, but I think graphic is gonna be most important. All right. So, yep, stage three cost 5K and we get some more points. All right, and now as we sit and finish it, we can get rid of all the bugs. I could click finish right now, but while there's still bugs there, it's a really bad idea. Um, and I'm actually gonna, okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit finish. As you can see, I could sit there and get more points, but again, eventually I'm gonna go bankrupt. So here, every time you finish a game, you get new experience. So you get experience based on like combinations and topics, and your experience goes into things based on how you prioritize them. So I didn't get much for story and quests or dialogues, but I learned a lot about graphic and stuff like that. And I also gained experience like myself as a person. And those are design, those are technology. This is pretty good. I'm ooh, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. No bugs. We got 16 research points, which we can use once we release the game. So we're going to go ahead and release it. So once we release it, um, and I'm, I'm just going to, every so often, I'm just going to click just to kind of pause because this pauses the game. If you watch those, those four little dots appear next to the week button and every time four appear, that's one week. So one week from now, more or less, we're going to get our reviews for the game and see how well we did. And if that seemed like a quick develop, oh, that was faster than I thought. If that seemed like a quick development, yeah, that was three months. That was pretty fast. So first reviews for a newly released game. And six <laughs> could have been better. Seven, good game. Ooh, we're gonna get an eight. We got an eight, very enjoyable. Six, I like it. All right, so that's actually pretty good. All things considered, that's pretty good. Um, as I've said, I've played this game before, so I know a bit of what to expect, but the topics always mess with me. Um, and I'm not very good at this game. I've only quote unquote beat it once. And that just means not going bankrupt until the end. It's, I don't think it's supposed to be that hard to beat. So we will see how this goes. There's going to be a lot of experimentation and a lot of confusion and a lot of I don't understand what's happening. And now we get to watch the sales. Bacon Industries, a newcomer in the game industry, has just released their first game, Bacon Sports. With The game received favorable reviews. With such a good start, Bacon Industries are sure to gain fans quickly. Yeah, so we're going to get news every so often because we are in the past. So... This will tell us about industry developments involving us. Like when we do well, this will shop up. Um, it'll talk about you know what's happening with new game platforms because right now it's just it's just the PC and the Gavador, but soon we're gonna start seeing some other stuff. So we get to watch sales and cha ching five thousand five hundred seventy two units in the first week on the market. We made thirty nine thousand dollars and we gained some fans. So. Yep, 46 fans. All right, so that's not a bad start. We are, uh, we are now, we now have more money than when we started. <laughs> so there's a couple of things we need to do now. So we can generate a game report. Now what that does is, so we can see the average review was 6.75. This will give us some insights as to why the game went the way it did. So it'll tell us about genre combinations. It'll tell us about all that. So we're gonna do that. That'll take some time and it'll gain us some research points. Company sales record of 10K units sold. To be fair, one unit sold was also a company sales record, but I guess we'll just go with it. So we gained some more research points. Research points are super important. Um, we'll explain why in a minute. All right, so our post release analysis of Gabe Bacon. I am tongue tied. Our, our sport. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Our post release analysis of Bacon Sports is complete, and we got the following results. Sports and simulation is a great combination. Dialogue seems to be not very important for this type of game. Okay. 
two things I already knew. And that'll happen sometimes. Sometimes you'll generate a game report and it will tell you absolutely nothing new. So we can do a couple things. We can look at game history, and this will tell us units sold, costs, income, profit. So already we made a tidy profit, uh, when it was released, all that kind of stuff. So that's all cool. We can develop a new game. We can also do some... <laughs> I can't talk. We can also do research. So research is how we find out about new technology and new ideas. So new topic we can do to try and get a better... That's... That's really not great. Um, we can, and you can see all the, there's tons of topics. Some of them are really good. If you're lucky, eventually you'll get something like fantasy or whatever, where you can really go to town with. And some are like vampire, like I, hospital, like surgeon sim. Like I, I, I genuinely don't know what to do with some of these topics. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and do music. Just because. Now you can see here is a custom game engine costs 50 research points. We're gonna want to do that soon. We're gonna research that soon. So what game engines do? You can see it takes some time to research. What game engines do is they allow us to actually use stuff we've researched, and that's just gonna keep selling for a while. Eventually, it'll go off the market. It lets us use stuff we research. So we've successfully researched music. So over time, we'll be able to research. Things like new graphics, new sound, new, you know, story innovations, cutscenes, all that kind of stuff. But we can't actually do anything with it unless we make a game engine that supports those things. That we that way we can actually integrate it into the game. So in the meantime, let's just make a new game. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do music this time. And we're gonna do simulation again. I'm not sure what a music RPG would be. I'm not sure I wanna know. And we're gonna go ahead and do the Gavador again. Um, I don't, I don't remember if I explained it this time around, but yeah, the Gavador, you can see the market share has already gone up. Gavador is a good idea for right now. That will change. That will change. So what do we call a music simulation game? I'm not even sure what you would call this. Cause like, you know, there's like rhythm games and stuff. Um, I could go with something really cheesy, like the last note or something. Sure. Why not? Uh, we're gonna do 2D graphics for this. I'm not sure what a text-based music simulation game would look like. So, here, I think this is actually gonna be pretty similar. So there, there's kind of, obviously there's two things that affect how you prioritize, the, the topic and the genre. Because we're the same genre, simulation, I don't think a whole lot's really gonna change here. I think the engine might be a bit more important here though, than, than for the sports one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Engine engine has a bit more priority. Bacon Sports is now off the market. It sold 18,000 units and generated $127,000 in sales. Um, I'm actually gonna, hold on, I'm gonna go to settings real quick. I want to, I want all messages to just pop up. And we're generating more research points. We need those, we want at least 50 of those. Um, Oh, and right here you can see uh, this this little icon right here. That's from the game report we did. So when we do a game report, we gain insights on both the genre and the topic. And then when we go to develop a game later in the same genre or topic, it'll remind us of those insights. So this is reminding us that we learned that it doesn't seem like dialogues are very important for this kind of game. There's a question mark because we're not certain. Um, you know, we've only had one game to, to show it, but we don't think dialogues are important for simulation games. Now for a music simulation, I think level design is going to be a bit more important than AI. Just for, because I'm, I'm basically picturing guitar hero here, so I feel like level design is going to be pretty important and AI not so much, even if there is any AI. Um, we'll make dialogues, uh, we'll just, we'll make them exist, basically. And we're actually not getting a whole lot of anything here, designer technology. So, all right, so this one, we're gonna do a full 180. Sound high, graphics a lot lower. World design can just stay where it is, barely existing. Um, I think we could technically choose to not have sound. We're not gonna do that for a music simulation game. That would be pretty bad. Um, yeah, okay, I think this is good. 
I, I just, I do a lot of guessing. I do a lot of, you know, just taking a swing at it. Recent market studies show that the Gavador 64 is steadily outsetting competitors in the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lower price, greater availability, and the flexible hardware configuration over other home computers. Experts say this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. So yeah, knowing your computer history is very valuable for this game. And we get rid of all the bugs. I think I'm going to sit on this one a little longer, just to see if I can get some more design and technology points, because we've got the money. Can I get anything more? Okay. We will finish. New record! New topic, new combo, so extra XP. Nothing's leveled up yet, but we should be leveling up in a game or two. And when we level up, things just get better. Our, our games just improve all around. Alright. Let's release it. And we can go ahead and just generate a game report right away. Um, and first reviews for our new release game came in. Oh my. Uh... This isn't looking much better. Yeah, it's looking a little better. You can tell like how many times a 10 pops up is, is kind of a good sign. Shows potential could have been better, good game I like. I, th I think that's exact same. Hold on. It's, no, it's actually slightly worse. It is slightly worse <laughs> than our other one. All right, fine. All right, monthly costs are 8K, we should. Right, right now, you know, we haven't had anything bomb, so we should be outpacing our monthly costs. Those costs will get more expensive as we go. According to rumors, the Japanese company, Ninvento, is planning to launch its very own home gaming console. Ninvento is known for the widely successful arcade game, Dinky King. Many industry experts doubt that home gaming consoles will take off, but we are eager to see what Ninvento will deliver. This is what I'm talking about. The names are just fantastic. Music and simulation is a great combination. Engine seems to be quite important. Platform genre match, governor to simulation, good. So that's the other thing. That's the other thing that affects um, which platform you pick is the genre. And so it's possible, I've been picking the governor because I'm market share, but it's possible that the PC might be better for simulation games. We'll see. All right, so we got some more research points. Not really enough to make into game engine though, so we're gonna go ahead and just make another game. That's that's the early game, guys. Is just just crapping them out like there's no tomorrow. So what topic this time? You don't want to, you know. You could. It's tempting when you get like a hit game to just remake it, and that ends very poorly. You want to kind of have some variation. So what if we do aliens and action? I'm thinking like Oregon Trail, but like. Uh, Hold on one second, guys. Okay, so Aliens action. I'm thinking like XCOM, but like Oregon Trail graphics, which actually sounds kind of fun. Uh, let's see here. Aliens in action. Um, and there's, all, there's all the cheap ones, you know, Invaders. And, and you could just name things after existing games, and, and that's fine, I guess. But I like to be creative, even though it has literally no impact on the game success. I th I just, I like I like being, being clever. Um... Aliens in action. Oh. <laughs> There's an achievement for it, because of course there is. <laughs> Alright, I did not know that. Aliens in action. Um... Ooh. Ooh. Return to sender. I like that. Um... Yeah, so the governor does well with simulation. Um, they're, they're good, but they may not be great. We're gonna do it again, because this is an action game. Return to sender. You know, like, uh, return the spaceships to sender. No. No, no one, okay. Did that... No? Hold on, why is the... Oh, okay, I guess just the base cost is 10k. Alright. We're gonna do 2D... Oh, it's the 2D graphics, okay. We're gonna do 2D... Yeah! We're going to do 2D graphics again. I'm not doing a text-based action game. Alright, so this one, story and quest is gonna matter a bit more, but still not very much. I don't I don't think this will change a lot, to be honest. Engine's important, but gameplay I think will still be most important. But story and quests will exist this time as opposed to being, you know, shoved in a box in the corner. 
Oh, and also this happens where your guy just sits there scratching his head and does nothing productive. And later on when there are time-based things, it is the most infuriating thing in the universe when all he can do is sit there and scratch his head. Alright, uh, dialogues will again make it exist. I'm gonna make AI priority again. I feel like for an action game, AI is more important. Level design. Again, dialogues are still low, but they exist. We don't want all your base are belonging to us. I mean, I think that was a translation issue, but still. And we're still making money on the last note. It hasn't gone off the market yet. We're, we've like, we're still, we still technically have doubled the money we had at the beginning of the year. Ah, today Ninvento has confirmed recent rumors and announced their plans to release a new home gaming console called the TESS early next year. The console features cartridge-based games and a uniquely designed controller. Nintendo, or sorry, Ninvento TES. It's just, it's just so good. If you, if you guys don't know, don't know your gaming history, that's totally acceptable. But some of these names are just freaking hilarious. Um, world design, I think, should exist this time. This should be more balanced all around. The fact that world design, all the, all the like you know background stuff didn't exist for the last two because they were sim games. It didn't really matter. Um, but they they still don't matter a lot, but they kind of do. We definitely want sound. So. The last note is now off the market. It sold 18,000. That's almost identical, isn't it? Like, my first two games were almost identical in their success. And yet again, I'm really not getting a whole lot of points for anything. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Come on. Do something. Really? Alright, fine. I guess I'll finish the game on 11 and 10. This is not gonna go well. I can already tell this is just this is just not going to go well. And I can also click to make this go faster. Hey, we level up our graphics. Alright. While that happens, we're gonna go ahead and develop uh oh wait, hold on. I'm gonna, why can't I do a game report? Did I trash the game on accident? There we go. Generate game report. I was like, what? What? First reviews came in. Uh. Okay. All right. Enjoyable. It's. it's I feel like every single game we make is just going to be the exact same thing. I guess. I guess that's where this is going. Oh, this is going to average up to seven. Let's get a three. Action games work well on the on the G sixty four. That's good. All right. You know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with all of our games being utterly average. Hi there. I just finished Return to Sender, and I am impressed by your talent. I'm in the contracting business, and we could use skills like yours. If you are ever short on cash, just let me know, and I will see if I have some work with you for, for you, Jason. So this opens up a whole new part of the game, and it's one of the most important parts of the game, at least in the way I play, because it's a way to get research points, and I said those were important, and I meant it. So contract work is timed work where we can just kind of sit there and develop design and research or design and technology points for random stuff. And if we do it in time, we get paid. Um, so it's really just about, you know, figuring out what you can handle, you know, your experience level, your workload level. And it's a way to get cash if you're hard, if you're, if you need more cash. But for me, I always use it to get more research points because the only way to get those is by doing game reports, making games, or at least right now, game reports, making games, and contract work. So, anytime we don't feel like just crapping out a game, that's a good thing to do. Aliens in action is a great combination. Level design seems quite important. Okay, so maybe I should have done better level design. I guess that makes sense. Especially if they're imagining, like, you know, space invaders kind of thing. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go to find contract work, and we can see it'll tell you how many design points and how many technology points. Now, if we look, um, right now we can't look at it. Later on, we'll be able to look at kind of like our stats and see how good we are at different things. Um, I believe you start out perfectly even. Um, so five weeks, so that's, so I'll just show you how fast a week goes. So week three just started and week four. So, so it happens very quickly. Uh, so, so 
five weeks to bubble up enough of those, and if I get all of those, then I succeed. And if I succeed, I get $19,000, and if I fail, I, I get, I have to pay 8000 So, that one I think we might be able to do, assuming he doesn't stop and scratch his head. This one uh, would be a little bit harder, still doable, lower penalty though, and better pay. Uh, this one is definitely doable, we could do this pretty easily, so we're going to start with that one. So you can see it just kind of bubbles up, little bubbles, and the time goes down. Today the, new, the, today the new game platform T and Spine Invento has been released. Yeah, okay, so we did that with plenty of time left, and we get an extra 13k. Jason here. I just got word from the client that the contract was completed successfully. Excellent work. Usually I have new contracts every six months, so check back sometime. All right, how long have I been recording? Okay, I've been recording for way longer than I planned, so I apologize if this episode was super long. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoy this. Um, let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this. If you don't, I'm probably going to post it anyway just because I really like this game. It's a lot of fun. I apologize if it's kind of hard to track what's going on and I'm talking too fast. Um, but yeah, this game, this game is a ton of fun. I really recommend it. You can buy it on Steam for pretty cheap, I can imagine. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, and even if you played it before, go play it again because they've updated it. Um, I know that you know when I first bought it, you know again sometime like 2013 or something, I played it a couple years ago and, and got to the end and there was stuff in there that like there were there were there were platform developments and stuff that didn't exist when this game came out. So um, yeah, absolutely go check it out. It's a really fun game. And anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.